Hi friends! If this is your first time visiting my channel, I'm so happy you're here. My name is Tina Zink and I'm an independent demonstrator with Stampin' Off! and I live in Nova Scotia, Canada. And to all of those of you returning, welcome back! This is part two of my pastel chalk series. I love working with pastel chalks. And in today's video, I'm going to demonstrate another technique and show you another way that you can use our chalks with our decorative masks. Using our soft assortment of pastel chalks with our decorative masks creates a background that's so easy and so fast and the results are beautiful. So you can use this for your cards or your scrapbook pages or any other kind of project and I'm looking forward to sharing this with you so you can try this at home too. So let's start stamping. So for this technique, I'm pulling out our decorative masks. These are our new ones in our current annual catalog. And this is the Plenty of Patterns pack. And they're beautiful. Look at the patterns. They're just gorgeous. Love these. Okay, so I'm bringing in this mask. And I'm going to grab a little bit of washi tape to hold it down on each side. I'm going to take my first mark and cover the whole piece of cardstock. Again, I know you can't see what's on there right now, but you will when I start adding some color. So I'm going to take my chalks again and bring in my silicone mat and then just add some more chalk. I love blues and greens and purples, so I think those are the colors. I may throw in some red and yellow, I'm not sure. Let's see. Might make a rainbow background, that would be pretty. I think that's good. All right, so I'm just gonna grab a blending brush, pick up some of that chalk, and then just start rubbing it onto my paper, and we have that beautiful pop and pastel look happening. Okay, and I'm going to go into some green, It's my green, and I'm blending some of it right into that blue as well, so you get the beautiful combination of the two colors. Okay, what color now? Let's go into some purple, use this one. A little bit goes a long way on these brushes as well. Okay, and I'm going to use my sponge daubers now and just put some red in here and there. And then lastly, some yellow. I think I need some more blue. I've kind of lost some of that blue and I love the blue, so I'm just going to Go back on top with some of that blue and just work it in. And you want to do this before the first mark has a chance to dry, otherwise your chalk is not going to stick to it. So I'm going to lift this up and I'm brush off the excess. And there's my super beautiful quick background. So now I'm going to bring in my stamp apparatus and I'm going to stamp right on top of this. So I'm bringing in the Biggest Wish stamp set. Grab my happy and my birthday. I haven't used this set yet, so I'm quite excited. This is a great stamp set and friend. There's friend right there. I'm just going to reposition this a little bit. All right, let's pick that up. I'm going to ink this with my Memento ink. Down. 
move this magnet because it's clearly in the way and stamp it again. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna take my anti-static, just rub on top, take my Versamark again. Go right over top. And then sprinkle on my clear embossing powder. and set that with the heat tool. And now that's ready to go into a card base. Quick and simple. So I have just a little bit of adhesive, just a tiny bit of adhesive behind this paper just to hold that into place. And then I'm gonna position my stencil just slightly off the edge a little bit and take some washi tape and hold that down okay take my first marking pad and go over the entire mask and I'm being careful not to pass this line on the side and I will show you why in a second. Make sure I get the ends. Okay, that looks pretty good. I think I got it all. Okay, now I'm going to lift this up. And I'm just going to line this up and do the other half. Clean my mask I'll just take my stays on cleaner and just rub it on and then wipe it off and then rinse it off and let it dry so that's how I will clean that so now it's time to bring in our chalk so I have my blending brushes now so I'm just gonna pick up some of that coastal cabana and whatever other color is in there and I'm just going to oh there's purple in there beautiful so I'm just gonna rub that on And pick up some green and I'm not even bothering cleaning my brush I'm just going right into the different colors and a little bit of chalk goes a long way make sure I get some blue all over and bring in some purple and I'm blending right on top of some of the color that's already on the paper. So fun to watch the pattern emerge. Some green. This granny apple green really brightens things up nice. I'm just going to wipe off the excess chalk. So you could do a lot of things with this beautiful background. You can stamp right on top of it. You can keep layering on top of it. You can cut out letters for scrapbook pages or home decor. So there's a lot you can do with this background. But I'm going to show you what we're going to do today. So I'm going to take my paper trimmer and I kind of cut this down to four. I'm going to set this piece aside and spin it around and cut this to measure five and a quarter. 
Okay, so now I'm bringing this piece in and I'm using the Love of Leaves stamp set because for this next part, you really need a solid image. I'm just gonna put this here and place my leaves down. And let's squeeze this little guy in right there. Okay, ink this up with my person mark. Sprinkle on the last little bit of my clear powder. I might have just enough. I know it's hard to see on the camera, but I'm going to line up the dies with the uh, clear embossed images and cut them out. So here are my die cuts. Now, of course, what you could also do is cut these out with your dies first and then emboss them with clear. So you can do them, either way will work. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna stamp this on with some of my gorgeous grape ink. Just kind of here and there. Glue this onto my card base. And now I'm just taking my blending brush with that gorgeous grape and I'm just going to go right around the edges. Now I'm just wiping off any excess that's sitting on top of that clear embossing powder. And you can see where the ink is staying on the edges, which is exactly what I want. Perfect. So now I have a one inch strip of gorgeous grape cardstock and I'm going to stamp my sentiment. Um, I'm so glad you're in my life. And emboss that in gold. There's the finished card. I added a gilded gem, some of our gold twine, and the sentiment. And it's just another fun way to use our uh, pastel chalks to create that beautiful background and even the, um, the die cuts. Now I also made some of these cards in blues and they were already sent out to some friends so I'll insert some photos so you can see how those turned out. And the last way I'm going to show you today how you can use our pastel chalks is just by having a piece of cardstock run through an embossing folder. So this one I've got the seashells. And I'm going to bring in my silicone mat with all my color. I'm going to use my blending brush and I'm just going to lightly add some color. And the beautiful images will just pop right off of your paper. And I'm just grabbing whatever colors I happen to pick up. You 
get a really quick background where the images pop right off of the page. I'm going to take it one step further. I'm going to take my first marking pad and very lightly swipe across the top on those raised images. Really light touch. Okay, I'm going to pick up some of my color now and you see how it really sticks um, on to that first mark again. So I got that soft background because I didn't use first mark and now I'm getting the um, more intense color because I've lightly gone on top with the first mark. So that's two different ways that you can use these. And if you want to, you can take your first mark, just add a little bit more using the corner. You can use your sponge daubers to really get in there. Be a bit more selective where you want your color to go. And if you want to take it one step further, you can add a little bit of gold foil just by Lately, adding a little bit of first mark here and there. Just adding my heat and stick powder. I only did just a tiny little touch of that first mark because I don't want a lot of gold on here. Just a little bit. And there's my finished piece with the beautiful gold on top of uh, the chalking. So here's my finished card and as you can see I have added a seahorse. This is from our new Sea Life dies. They're absolutely beautiful and all I did is I cut the seahorse out of black cardstock and you can see the difference of what the black cardstock looks like versus the seahorse on the card because what I did is I added first mark ink pad. I covered the whole die with first mark ink pad after I cut it and then I went on with my chalks and then after I put my chalk on my seahorse I went over the entire seahorse with my clear wink of Stella. It was a complete experience experiment but oh my gosh I'm so happy with how it turned out it and I wanted to show you this card which is another one that I made and I was really pleased with the results so for this one I didn't even use for some mark all I did is I used one of our decorative masks from that same set that I used on all the other cards and I sponged on the chalk pastels and then I stamped on the script from Fairy First Eye with Crumb Cake and the greenery with Old Olive. And of course the butterfly is from our Butterfly Brilliant stamp set. So what I did there is I embossed the butterfly with gold and then I used my chalks and my blender pen to color in the butterfly. I also added Clear Wink of Stella and then cut the butterfly out with the dye.
and there will be another video coming to you soon part of this pastel chalk series where I will show you just a couple more techniques that I love using with our pastel chalks thank you so much for watching I appreciate you take care and happy stamping